Hello and welcome. We bring you Speed Week on the road today at a place rich in Australian motorsport history, the Peter Brock Museum. The mastermind behind this fine artwork is Peter Champion. He joins us now with his wife, Sandy. It's so fantastic to be here and honour. It's big, it's impressive, it's beautiful. What was the inspiration, Peter, that started this collection? The inspiration was that um, back in the early 90s, I, I liked the brand, the HTT brand, which was Peter's famous brand. Mm -hmm. And he would built uh, nearly 5,000 cars for the Australian market, high performance Holdens. And um, I, I liked the brand that much that I'd bought five of his cars before I even met the man and um, that was the inspiration behind the start of it. And there's an interesting story when you actually did meet him. <laughs> yes, the first time I met Peter was interesting. Um, I was at a function that was put on by the, um, the uh, Brock Car Club and I'd been invited along to that and I was sitting there and I'd taken a photo along of my five cars <laughs> taken on my lawn out at Blackwater, central Queensland. Um, and I stood in the line and I handed it to him and he grabbed his pen and he went to sign it and I pulled it back and I said, oh no, I just wanted to show you Brocky. And he looked at me and said, who owns these? And I said, I do. And he said, you're mad, you bugger. <laughs> you're mad, you bugger. Yeah. Now, you could be considered mad for doing this museum too. It is so big. Is it 17... 1,700 square metres. square metres. Now, Sandy, that's no easy feat. How did it come together? Well, we've got in excess of 40 cars in here now, and that's not even the whole collection of Peter Brock cars. He drove many, many cars, but my husband has put together as many of those as he could lay his hands on over um, a long period of time. And we now have a collection here that is world class uh, and to a, a wonderful Australian icon in Peter Brock and uh, to the motorsport industry and Australian history. And I imagine when that Australian icon stepped through these doors, he must have been as impressed as we are. Peter was here on a number of occasions and he saw it as a plain empty shed because when, uh, when we purchased it to put the car collection together in, it was an indoor go-kart centre. So uh, it sat dormant for a number of years and we were able to purchase it, perfect position. We live in Queensland, so this was close to where uh, We've worked most of our life, so um, he came along and we sat here and he drew pictures and we discussed everything. I had, I had most of the cars in here at that stage, so we positioned them and, and what you see today was drawn by Peter himself. So, What would Peter say to you to thank you? I guess he'd walk through the door and he'd go, PC, you did it. So. So Sandy and Peter, it sounds like you've had an incredible relationship, not only in doing this museum, but also with Peter himself. We'll pick up on your story and his as the story goes on. Back to the Peter Brock Museum now. And Peter, there are in excess of about 40 cars here, all beautiful, all have a story to tell. But what are the most important to you that spell out defining time in Peter Brock's career? All of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> can, you, can you refine it down to a few that really stand Look, out? Um, I, I guess one very important car in this collection is the 82-83 Bathurst winning Commodore. Mm -hmm. It won two years straight and um, in 1982 Peter Brock won it and with that car. Then the following year it was handed down to John Harvey and uh, 10 laps into the race in 83 Peter blew up, blew his 05 car up mm -hmm. and he pulled his brother and Phil out of the car and he and Larry Perkins got in the car to win again so mm, the, the important part about that is that it's only one of two cars in this country that have won Bathurst twice mm. and we did have both cars in this collection up until just recently. Mark Scaife owns the other one. Many. For me walking through it was the Daytona, I mean obviously a painful story but a beautiful story too in terms of what you've done to celebrate his life, even the elevation of the car. Uh, members of the family asked me if I'd buy the car, mm. put it back together in um, memory of Peter. They believed his spirit was in that car. So it took Sandy and I a, a few weeks of um, agonising over that uh, decision to do that and we have done that. It's the last page, in the uh, last chapter in Peter's history. It w there was nothing morbid about it, um, our intentions. It was just the final chapter in what we'd put together. and. Uh, People aren't 
afraid of it when they walk in. They're, oh, there's the car, and they respect it. It's part of the story, the collective. Well, Sandy and Peter, there's plenty more stories to discuss in the show to come, but now we've got to turn to a break. And on the other side, there's all the action on two wheels from Formula Rolls, Pro Twins, Naked Bikes and Ultralight. See you shortly. Welcome back to a very special Speed Week. We're in Queensland at the Peter Brock Museum and Peter and Sandy Champion are still with us. Now, talking through all that is gorgeous about this museum, there is plenty more than cars. There is. We've got a, a very large and wide arrangement of uh, Peter's memorabilia from his racing career and also uh, personal items that are dotted around the collection. We've got his little paddock uh, motorbike that he used to take, Dougie, his famous border collie for a ride around the paddocks, his fishing rods uh, and of course the very important trophy collection uh, from Bathurst that is here on display also, which um, is an authorised set of trophies from the family. And Sandy, Olympics is also in the mix. It is, yes. I was lucky enough to work for Peter and Bev at their home office, so I remember spending um, a week prior to the Sydney Olympics uh, sitting on the ground there labelling all his uniforms. So he, Pete was actually uh, very humbled to be an athlete liaison officer at the Sydney 2000 Olympics and also the Greek Olympics. Well, Peter and Sandy, it strikes me we've barely touched the surface of Peter Brook's story, but we are heading to racing now. The Australian FX Superbike Championship comes to us from Winton Raceway. Well, fantastic racing from the Australian FX Superbikes as ever. And now we head back to Peter Brock. Peter and Sandy, what does the future hold? Sadly, you guys have to wrap up operations, but that's not the end of the story, surely? No, look, um, that's not the end of the story. We've um We've gone on the open market with our collection now because we felt it's time to move on. Let it go to another level if there is another level for the Peter Brock collection. Mm. And I believe there is. And um, there's, there's plenty of talk about where it should go, the Gold Coast, Sydney, wherever. But we, we have our, um, our spots where we think it should be. And although Sandy, some grief in it ending as it is, there'll be certainly joy with it reopening and, and a new injection of life. From we hope that owners. we, yeah, we really hope that takes off. Uh, Pete and I have worked very hard to get the museum to the public level that we have. We've had no prior experience in what it is that we've done, so we've learnt tur tourism and learnt public display and marketing, and uh, we hope that the next owners are able to elevate it even higher again to make it the Australian tourist attraction that it deserves to be. Well, thank you. It's lovely to learn about it. And um, now we're looking ahead to the calendar of motorsport.